you hear a lot of talk about intermittent fasting and autophagy nowadays. It's going to be amazing and it works all the time. But there are still some misconceptions, mistruths, little lies and myths about autophagy. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the lies of autophagy. Truth is, here are some of the basics of autophagy. Autophagy is a catabolic state that gets triggered by energy deprivation. Energy deprived states activate AMPK, which is a fuel sensor that allows autophagy to kick in. To trigger autophagy, you need to suppress insulin because it promotes energy storage. Excess amino acids and protein will inhibit autophagy by raising mTOR, which is the anabolic switch. Caloric restriction and fasting are the best known ways of promoting autophagy. Number one, you need to fast for three to five days to activate autophagy. It is true that someone who is eating a regular diet with no carbohydrate restriction or no restriction of other calories, then for them it may indeed take like three days to get into ketosis and to activate autophagy. But there isn't a definitive timeline for autophagy that applies to all the people. Autophagy is regulated by the balance between mTOR and AMPK. So that balance is also going to differ between people and based upon what kind of a diet are they following. You can definitely speed up the process of going into the therapeutic zone of ketosis and autophagy by having a lower carb diet and not over consuming protein either so it's gonna change very variously number two you get autophagy on a 24-hour fast some people say that you get autophagy by fasting even as little as 16 to 20 hours which isn't that easy here's the reason you don't start fasting immediately after finishing your last meal because you need to first digest the nutrients you ate the post-absorptive state of metabolism lasts about four hours after the meal you've eaten in reality you only enter a real fasted state after five to six hours of finishing your last meal because you first need to digest the nutrients and your body won't go into the fasted state until it has digested those nutrients on a 16 to 20 hour fast you've only actually spent time in a fast state for about 12 hours which probably isn't enough to trigger autophagy Damn it! three more autophagy is better too much autophagy can have a lot of negative side effects certain bacteria and parasites like brucella use autophagy to replicate themselves autophagy can enhance tumor cell fitness against environmental stressors which makes it more difficult to kill them However, sometimes it can help the cancer survive by feeding it. Too much autophagy can also lead to muscle wasting and sarcopenia, which will jeopardize longevity. Autophagy is an amazing thing with a lot of health benefits, but it's not ideal all the time. 4. Autophagy is starvation. Technically, you are starving, but I think it's the wrong way of looking at it. All people have some body fat. Body fat is stored energy that the body can use to feed itself. Even lean people with around 10% body fat have about 40 to 50,000 calories. That's enough to survive for weeks and months. Autophagy breaks down all proteins and cells that will be used for energy again. Under energy deprivation, the body is forced to recycle its weaker components that wouldn't occur while eating. Basal autophagy also increases longevity and lifespan. It's the central component to life extension seen in caloric restriction. Starving. Number five, autophagy makes you build muscle. To build muscle, you need to also trigger muscle protein synthesis, which requires the consumption of proteins. While fasting, you're not getting protein from food, which keeps the body in a catabolic state of breakdown, as opposed to anabolism of growth. Theoretically, autophagy can break down some of the old proteins inside your cells and use that for protein synthesis, but it's still very impractical and very almost impossible to do because you also need some of the key anabolic uh, amino acids like leucine. There are some rare occasions where someone who is very overweight, they can't build muscle and lose fat at the same time if they don't have a lot of prior weightlifting experience and they eat at a caloric deficit. But to build muscle on these very longer extended fasts, that's going to be really difficult and almost impossible. Number six, autophagy eats loose skin. It's said that autophagy can eat up loose skin and tighten it up after you've lost a bunch of weight. However, that's only true to a certain extent. A 2014 study in Japan found that aging fibroblasts have decreased autophagy. Fibroblasts create collagen in the skin, which prevents wrinkles and loose skin. Another 2018 study from Korea found that aging fibroblasts experience a higher speed of waste production, 
which results in skin aging. The researchers said that autophagy plays a crucial role in counteracting the aging process of the skin by keeping the fibroblasts healthy. Autophagy may help with slowing down the aging process of the skin, but it's not literally going to eat up the loose skin and tighten it up. 7. Fat doesn't stop autophagy Although fat doesn't spike insulin the same way carbs or protein does, it will still shift you into a fat state. Ketosis promotes brain macroautophagy by activating CERT1. Beta-hydroxybutyrate and other ketones tend to be high during fasting and starvation, but they're also elevated when eating the ketogenic diet. Ketone bodies also stimulate chaperone-mediated autophagy, which targets only specific amino acids and other substrates. The problem is that mTOR doesn't only respond to carbohydrates or amino acids, it also responds to fat and calories. Excess calories will still stimulate mTOR, which will then shut down autophagy. With that being said, something like 100% fat, maybe MCT oil or coconut oil, they may not stop autophagy entirely because they do elevate ketone bodies, and they may promote chaperone mediated autophagy but again it's a gamble you, you wouldn't want to take a bunch of calories from fat but maybe like one teaspoon is something that you can get away with you lie number eight bcas don't stop autophagy branch chain amino acids are pure amino acids that will definitely stop autophagy the only time you can get away with bcas is during fasted exercise when you're already burning through a lot of glycogen and you have elevated blood sugar. Number 9. You can't get autophagy when eating meat. It's thought that eating any meat or having a diet higher in protein means you'll never get autophagy for the rest of your life and you'll accelerate aging. When it comes to autophagy, then the eating frequency is the most important thing. You can still stop autophagy by eating a high carb diet three times a day, even if you restrict your protein and you consume no meat. Likewise, you can still get autophagy on a carnivorous diet, high protein diet, if you practice some form of caloric restriction because it induces additional energy deprivation on the body. Carbohydrates and insulin are also one of those things that will stop autophagy because of activating mTOR, so it's never that one size fits all and it's never that black and white. Number 10. Fructose doesn't break autophagy. Fruit breaks autophagy and inhibits with ketosis because it refills your liver glycogen. Most of the balance between mTOR and AMPK gets mediated by the glycogen content of your liver. The liver is like a central hub for nutrient status and energy metabolism. Fruit isn't bad and it's healthy in some amounts, but it's not the sort of a pure food that keeps you in a fast state and it's gonna maintain autophagy, it's still gonna break it. Number 11, coffee stops autophagy. Drinking coffee doesn't break a fast or stop autophagy. In fact, coffee promotes autophagy and ketosis. The polyphenols in coffee will stimulate the autophagy process by itself, but the drink itself also supports it through other mechanisms. To get autophagy from coffee, then you would have to drink it black, with no cream, no milk, no sweeteners, no sugar. Adding some form of dairy to your coffee is gonna break the autophagy faster even than other things, because dairy raises IGF-1, which increases insulin as well, so it's a no-no. Milk was a bad choice! Number 12. You can't have autophagy while eating. It is true that the surest and easiest way to activate autophagy is to fast and not eat anything, but there are certain foods that promote the process of autophagy. Sulforaphane from broccoli and cruciferous vegetables increase autophagy. Curcumin, turmeric and ginger increase autophagy. Resveratrol from dark berries, red wine and skin of grapes increases autophagy. Polyphenols from dark pigmented berries and vegetables stimulate autophagy and medicinal mushrooms induce autophagy as well. The caveat to this is that you probably still need to practice mild caloric restriction to gain those benefits. But these foods are simply a few examples of that you can still stimulate the cleansing process and stimulate autophagy with food. If you want to know how to increase autophagy without fasting, then check out one of my videos about it. And lastly, number 13, exercise stops autophagy. Besides fasting, the second best way of promoting autophagy is to exercise. Exercise induces autophagy in peripheral tissues and in the brain. That's why I think the perfect combination for health is to practice intermittent fasting and do resistance training. If you want to know how to combine them together for optimal autophagy and muscle growth, then check out my book, Metabolic Autophagy. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay autophagic, stay empowered. You lie!